This question makes it very obvious that we're going to need to think about right triangles. I mean, it's the first freaking word. And then it also talks about hypotenuses. So hopefully just the idea of a right triangle triggers the idea of Pythagorean theorem for you. If not, remember the reference chart gives you a bunch of formulas. It is given to you. It's one of the most popular formulas in like math that you'll ever learn. So hopefully it's something you, something you have memorized. But if not, it's right there. And it does remind us that the C part is the hypotenuse. That's the side that is opposite the right angle. So if you're having trouble understanding this then well just start by drawing a similar right triangle to the one that they give you and put things in the right place so 24 and 21 are the two legs of this triangle and then the hypotenuse is weird but we can just put it there three square root d so we're going to use a squared plus b squared equals c squared but the c will be a little annoying we just need to make sure that that part always goes in that space the 21 and the 24 though they're both legs we can put them in a or b it doesn't really matter the order doesn't matter there one thing that is kind of weird that i don't love that they did in this is they flipped it and put the c first is that how any of you learned it I, I don't think so, right? Everyone I've ever taught in math or, or helped with the SAT has always said a squared plus b squared equals c squared. I have no idea why the reference chart is flipping it, but there you go. It's the same formula. It's just flipped. Anyway, let's put things where they're supposed to go. So uh, 21, that is our value of a. 24 is our value of b. And I'm going to use some parentheses here, but 3 square root d is our value of c, our hypotenuse. Now the calculator is going to take over. Let's just find what is the uh, uh, 21 squared. 21 times 21 is 441. 24 squared is 576. And hopefully you know how to deal with this situation. The square is going to apply to both pieces. I, I, I resist the word distribute here because it's not behaving like distribution in the way that you normally think about it. What's really happening is we're multiplying three radical D, oop, don't need that, three radical D times three radical D. So what ends up happening is the two threes, since they're outside the radical, can be multiplied by each other, so that's nine. And then the two radical Ds also can be multiplied by each other because they both have the D part. And then radical D times radical D is just D. So it does kind of work out now in a nicer way. The radical scared us at first, but now this is pretty easy. Let's just combine like terms. 441 plus 576 is 1100, or sorry, 1017, and that's equal to 9D. And we'll finish this off just by dividing both sides by 9. And when we do, we get that D is equal to 113, and that is our answer. So weird numbers, big numbers, maybe that's a little scary, but uh, Pythagorean theorem is one of the most fundamental geometry concepts. It's something you need to be comfortable with. There might be harder versions of this down the road, but honestly, the fact that this was weird from the start really didn't bother me. I knew that this was going to be Pythagorean theorem. I kind of trusted that it's going to work itself out. You do, though, need to understand how radicals work. Very often, that is something you learn right alongside Pythagorean theorem. So uh, hopefully it all is kind of stored in the same part of your brain. But do remember that no matter what, if it's a geometry question, you have these geometry formulas given to you on every math section. So don't be afraid to check those. Maybe it'll move you in the right direction and get you a point that you might otherwise have forgotten.